All right, Igor, so I really wanted you back in here today to talk a little bit about the state of the market, right? You, you work on the east side. You work pretty much everywhere in King County, a little bit of a, I want to say, a North Pierce, South Snohomish. Talk to us about the state of the market because there is a major shift. I'm feeling a shift with my clients, and a lot of our mutual clients. What are you seeing right now? Folks, it's a little too early to say, you know, that we're out of the woods just yet, because think about it, we got to look back at what was the market over the last six months. And the market was kind of slow. There were fewer buyers, there were fewer sellers, counter transactions reduced by 50%, meaning that 50% of buyers just were waiting. They didn't move anywhere, they were waiting. And right now, in January, we started seeing some of those buyers getting off the fence and started acting again. They were started to go after it because why were they waiting? They were waiting to hear some news out of you know the Federal Reserves, out of the stock markets of how many more interest hikes would we have? Is this is the bottom? They were waiting for the bottom, right? Because it's hard to say. So if I buy a home, it goes down another 5% in value or 10%, like is this is the right time? And it feels right now that the time is now. And we started seeing those buyers coming back. I already started seeing multiple offers come back um, on some properties. On some properties, I even seen nine offers. And that was the kind of uh, entry level Rambler 1200 square feet in Bellevue, nine offers, 100,000 over asking. Yeah. So I don't want to spoke the markets just yet. Like we're going back to our normal market that we had two years ago in 2020. If you look at graphs, like we would gradually move in 60, 100 grand on the annual basis. And I think we start seeing that right now. Yeah, and that's that's a big deal because January was interesting for my office personally. Right now we're in you know February, we're gonna be rolling into March soon. We saw an influx of, I wanna say 40% more applications come through, really just, I wanna say week over week, at one point, right? So we're seeing a lot more people coming out. Talk to us a little bit about supply and demand because I know with supply and demand in real estate, it's not it's not perfectly evened out, right? Correct, yeah. So what, what we had had um, last fall, a lot of supply were not selling, right? Because those buyers were not buying and that supply was going into the rental pool. So rentals, Actually, I have some data on that. Rental prices were just flat for the year. The beginning of the year, they went crazy high. In the end of the year, they just flatted, right? So right now, we start seeing that inventory start to shrink a bit by bit. As I said, I don't wanna create the hype. It's not, we're not out of the woods just yeah. yet. But I monitor my market very closely. I work with builders and we have some spreadsheets for everything new that comes on the market. We we'll go see it. And then I start seeing that about one in two properties are selling off a day. And that active inventory just goes out one by one, one by one. Yeah. Um, our open houses are full again. You know, we have uh, first weekend about 55 parties, which wow. seems like most like real buyers. So buyers seeing that homes are selling again, right? Like in sometimes even two, three days, if it's a good home, it makes them wanting to act. And they also realize, hey, first of all, rates are not going to be 3% anymore. Like they're a bit under six, around 6%. If Fed stops increasing the interest rates in the next, who knows, maybe three to four months, or what they have done just the, the other few days, they yeah. increased it by quarter of a percent, just saying, look, it's not going to be three quarters anymore. They said that they will do a quarter for next two months. Maybe they stop after that. Maybe they continue yeah. to do quarters but our economy is doing fine. It feels like a bottom of the market and that makes them actually go out and be looking again. Yeah, and that's a big deal, right? With the Federal Reserve with their 25 basis point rate hike. And what a lot of consumers may not know is just because the Fed raises rates, that does not mean that mortgage rates are going up. Actually, mortgage rates are directly determined on the bond market, right? You have 30 year, 15 year fixed rate bonds. And with if bonds, for example, if they're going up, right? Meaning people are liquefying their stocks and rolling them into securities, then we see interest rates come back down. The reverse is also true, right? If the bonds are going down, meaning people are pulling money out of the bond market, out of securities and going into more, I want to say investment style type of deals, right? Where you're pulling more money and going into stocks or other portfolios, then you'll see interest rates come up. But really right. CPI, the consumer pricing index, 
it comes to inflation, that's also a big, big, big factor when it comes to rates. And as of right now, CPI is now getting under control. The Fed talks about that. They're saying, hey, we're now we're there when it comes to control of our inflation, right? Whether it's true or not true, everyone has an opinion on that. But that's what they're saying with the Jerome Powell was talking about. Correct. And, and let's be devil's advocate for a second, yeah. right? Because sometimes I get criticized for always bringing good news. Like, so look, yeah. the CPI numbers are better over the last, I oh, think yeah. in uh, in September. So they were at 9%, today 6.5%. So Fed's target rate is, they said, 2%. So the question is, how much more damage would they be willing to occur, right? And how the markets will react. We got jobs numbers today, like yep. half a million jobs. Fantastic. So even with those interest rates, economy is doing fine, yep. which also brings brings us to the thought that they would continue to increase interest rate to continue to debate that um, inflation. But what people forget, we really have no inventory in here. Like yep. I always say, we have a short term inventory that increased, but there is no new inventory possible anywhere here. We need to upzone, we need to create more land. There is no new land, right? There is yeah. lakes and mountains and so on. So these buyers, they were waiting and then we, they, they just have to see maybe another month to be like, okay, actually economy is doing fine. Actually, I could afford this payment. Actually, I could see some of those homes in that price point. I can act and I believe that that, again, that supply will shrink um, even if interest rates will continue to increase because our economy is doing good. Yeah, and that's what I want. I was waiting for you to say that when it comes to supply and demand on inventory because you're 100% right, Igor. You can't create new land, right? Inventory is what it is right now. And our economy is a unique economy, right? For example, right now we all, I'm seeing multiple offers on a lot of transactions. They're not seeing that in Texas. They're not yeah, seeing that yeah. in North and South Carolina. They're not seeing that in Missouri. They're not seeing that in Nevada, but we're seeing that here. Why? Well, we have a really strong, unique economy. When, let's say, something happens on a macro scale and the U.S., we'll say, suffers from an economic standpoint, well, us, Washington State, yeah, we feel it hit, but it's not like any other state. Why? Because we have a lot of tech here. We have the port system here. We have a lot of really good security-based jobs. That's why some people may be moving out, but a lot of people are moving into Washington State. That, we have that, Boeing, the largest employer in Washington yeah. State. You know, here we have two huge Boeing factories. So it's that's a big deal. Let, let me jump on this. Like, yeah. look, our economy is not immune to you know shock waves. The the real estate decreased thirty percent from the peak make no no mistake like it already had happened the question is that i would argue that that's the bottom and people forget how much money around here there are a lot of money like they they simply forget i can't talk about all the united states but there are a lot of money in washington it, yeah. like think of all the companies they are here and what will happen you just mentioned so people come back to me and say hey layoffs I think layoffs is the best thing <laughs> that could possibly happen to those companies because it's time to get back to reality, right? It's time to go back to work. It's time to stop jumping from company to company and raise and wait for 150K raises on another company. I talked to a few managers in Amazon. They're making their people come back to the office. This is the time. They're in the office three days a week. They want them in the office four days a week. And they later will push to five days a week being in the office. What would that do? It will bring people back to the core. It will bring people back to Bellevue. It already is happening. Yeah. Because what happened when COVID started? When COVID started, people said, look, I'll go work in Nevada. I'll be in Marysville. You name it. I'll go to Texas. Housing is so much cheaper. You know, yeah. I'll work, work remote, all of that. Well, not so fast. I don't know about Texas and Arizona, their markets, like I'm not a net, you know, specialist or expert on, on that, but they will be coming back here. That's happening. And that's one of the, you know, post effects of those layoffs. People will be coming back to the core and that will also with the money that they bring and the little supply that we have, supply will continue to shrink and prices gradually will grow. Not as crazy as they used to, right? What we had last two years was insane. Yeah. But just like we had in 2018, 19, and 20, interest rates were five and a half back then, but nobody <laughs> remembers that. Yeah. Like we would have two, three offers on the home, 50 to 70,000 over asking, 
for good homes, 20, 30,000 over asking on okay homes, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and with the whole economy aspect, people going to work, one thing that's a big deal is when you have, let's say you have 100,000 people going back to work, right? what happens? Well, those 100,000 people, as they're driving, they're gonna wanna hit coffee stand. They're gonna wanna go and have a lunch with coworkers. They're gonna wanna go and maybe pop by a store, pop by something versus going on Amazon, right? And purchasing something for their spouse or their kids as they're going back. There'll be company events. All that money coming, like you said, into the market, it's a big deal. Because as they're gonna be going out, now we're gonna see an increase of consumer spending. That's gonna help flow our, I wanna say, uh, money economic, you know, yeah. how we work yeah. here in, in Washington State, which is a big deal, right? Small business owners are gonna be making a little bit more, everyone's gonna be spending a little bit more. And what the Fed is doing is they're trying to slow down consumer spending a bit, right? To Correct. Do it. But this with everyone coming back to work as well, that's gonna help, I wanna say, stabilize what we have going on. And I think from a real estate standpoint, I know a lot of families, a lot of people that kind of took a step back and they wanna wait and see what happens. And Igor, I can't even tell you, I know a lot of people that regret not purchasing even in 2020. Yeah, no, I'd, you know, like or I'd 2019, 2020, that, 2018. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people regret waiting to think, hey, is right now going to be a good time? I would say this. It's better to pay yourself than it is to pay some investor or a landlord, for one. I would just right. remind this, like, guys, always, I mean, it, it's a crazy thing to say, and I've been getting hit for this. As I always say, house is not an investment, right? So what I mean by that, focus on the house. I always yeah. say the same thing. You hear me saying that like yeah. 10 times. As long as you like the house, as long as you can afford it. Yeah. Two things, like the house, can afford it. Even if you bought in March 2022 at the peak of a market, like if you found the house you love and rates were 3% and you can afford that house, you should be fine. It will take some time to get to yeah. the level, but most likely it will happen. Back to supply demand. We will never have enough supply around here. Just yeah. not going to happen. I, I can make a presentation on that. Demand is here yeah so then i also think what if the rates keep going keep going and keep going up what if they do not you know stop like if the fed will create too much damage and actually will send us a recession into recession and it's not going to be a mild recession they will pivot and reverse course they will drop the rates what happened in 2020 they dropped the rates to zero <laughs> yeah so the mortgage rate became three percent that will boost the market right so it just if you're trying to make an economic decision and you know there are a lot of data there are all of this don't be confused just always remember the truth just like said focus on the house focus on finding the place that you like that works for you that you could live in for the next five six seven years as long as you can afford it don't worry about anything else but i do believe that market is making a comeback we already start seeing offer review dates i think it will be good in a way that it will bring confidence Right, because the last six months people are like, is this the time? Is it is it gonna go down? Well, this is it. This is the bottom, I truly believe. So now you can go back and shop, do your offers, find yourself a home and just enjoy life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, we'll we'll see. It's uh I have a lot of thoughts when it comes to on a macro scale, what the Fed might do once we actually hit in you know, the full, I wanna say recession, because I do believe we are in a recessionary market, right? the way that we're seeing, the way that things are going, uh, we are. But what the Fed's gonna do, that's gonna be a whole different story. But Igor, thank you. Thank you for popping on. Thank you very on. much, thank you Appreciate for having Appreciate you, of course, and we're gonna keep rolling. Absolutely, thank you.